AMD's next gen got a wreck. NVIDIA, Apple's new gen uh, gets wrecked by the previous one. And Valve doubling Steam Deck shipments. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today we're going to start off today's episode talking about some little details that we got coming out from AMD regarding their RDNA 3 GPUs, which is their next generation of graphics cards, RX 7000 series, as you may call it. We have like numbers and letters for everything in multiple different variations of forms. Welcome to PC gaming, where it's all complicated and people like to make fun of monitor manufacturers for coming up with random nonsense. Everybody's doing it. We just pretend things make more sense than others. Any hoozles, turns out AMD talked about at their financial analyst day about what they've got coming down the pipeline for RDNA 3. Number one, re-architectured compute units, making things graphics faster, and then enhance ray tracing capabilities because ray tracing on AMD cards is kind of donkey doo doo. We actually just finished filming something with the 6950 XT and Cyberpunk is absolutely horrendously slow when you turn on ray tracing. It's just, it's no good. Anyways, AMD saying that these things will allow for an optimized graphics pipeline that delivers even faster clock speeds and improved power efficiency. And they're going to be able to develop hybrid approaches that takes the performance of rasterization, which is normal game graphics stuff, and combined with the visual fidelity of ray tracing, hopefully it would be good. Also, AV1 codec support as well as DisplayPort 2.0. So a lot of good stuff coming out from AMD. It does look like they're going to offer another solid generation. I think the RX 6000 is a solid competitor to Nvidia's lineup when you just look at regular gaming performance. If they could somehow catch up when it comes to ray tracing, that'd be appreciated because there are some games where ray tracing is good to turn on. I've it, There's more and more that are coming out and I think maybe this next generation, the 40 series and the RX 7000 series might be the time where like ray tracing actually is mainstream and like you, you leave it on. But AMD couldn't uh, talk about their next gen GPUs without laying down a little smack lay down smack smack lay lay smack down am i talking about doing drugs i don't know amd came out and said hey uh you know even though our next generation is going to be 50 percent better performance per watt that doesn't mean you don't push power levels up if the competition is doing the same thing so kind of confirming what we've been hearing that something like the RTX 4090, 4090 Ti might consume 600 watts when the current generation of 3090 Ti only does 450. So kind of elevating that power draw, but then continuing to say, it's just that they'll have to push them a lot higher than we will. Oh, got him. Looks like Nvidia is gonna be the hot and loud one this next generation. They're gonna require the thermonuclear cooling capabilities of a nuclear submarine, which that has the entire ocean around it to help cool it, allegedly. I don't, I'm not a doctorate in submarine physics. But AMD, gonna be a lot better next generation and kind of saying that they're gonna be a lot more efficient than Nvidia. Does that sway you? Do you need the intangibles that Nvidia tends to offer in things like the CUDA core acceleration, in things like the Nvidia broadcast software suite, as well as extra features like RTX voice, all of that kind of stuff? Or is it really just raw gaming performance that you're looking for? And if an AMD can offer that at a slightly better price point, does Team Red get the slot inside your PC. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. But it turns out that the storage slot in the M2 MacBook Pros is a little bit worse than the M1 MacBook Pros, at least when it comes to the default storage configuration. There's now reports coming out that the M2 MacBook Pro has 50% slower read speeds than the previous generation, at least when it comes to the 256 gigabyte SSD. And the reason that they're finding out for this is that the M1 computer has dual 128 eight gigabyte chips, which allows things to happen in parallel and go a little bit faster, whereas the M2 chips have a single 256, thereby they're slower, which like I've complained about the M2 MacBook Pro quite a bit, and we're working on a video over on UFD Tech where I'm gonna complain about it even more. And this just, yeah, this is a stupid device. Like you shouldn't be buying this, okay? If, you, if, you're, not, if you're not getting base storage on the MacBook Pro, then like you're gonna start spending so much money that you might as well save up for the M1 Pro MacBook Pro, or 
if you're gonna go with base storage, it might just make more sense to go with the M2 MacBook Air. It just, it's a weird device. But none of the other M2 MacBook Pros are affected by this. It's only the 256 gigabyte that suffers from this slower speed. And what might suffer on your face is heat because new reports are coming out that Apple's mixed reality headset set, headset will be uh, M2 capable, have the M2 chip, 16 gigs of RAM, and they're gonna have to cool that thing. This is in contradiction to other reports that have come out saying that it's only gonna be the M1 chip, but I'll believe any of this when I finally see it. And do you believe crypto stonks? Cause you should, and you should also believe in life after love. Anyways, Bitcoin down 1.78% to be at just under $21,000. Ethereum down 2% to be at 1200 bucks and Dogecoin down just under 1% to be at 7.2 cents. Now we're gonna bring you the hottest tech deals that are out on the internet, thanks to Reese. Hey buddy, what you got for us? Hey friends, Reese here bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. First up, we have the HyperX Cloud Alpha S, a 7.1 surround sound gaming headset, which is a fan favorite over at the UFD Tech Crew. It's currently going for $62.99, which is a saving of 52%. Second up, we have the Alienware AW2521H, a 1080p IPS panel, 360 hertz gaming mono, which is, I personally have the 240 hertz version and Nice. I love it. It's currently going for $364.98, which is a saving of 42%. You can check out all these deals and more at the link in the video description. And then how do I, how do I leave? Do I just do the whoo? And while you're trying to buy those deals, motherboard manufacturers want you to buy more motherboards because they're coming out with new projections for 2022 where they're expecting that motherboard sales are going to be down tremendously this year. If we take a look, they're expecting that they're only going to sell 14 million Asus motherboards and 9.5 million gigabyte motherboards, which is down quite a bit from the last year. Asus is expecting their sales to contract by 24% gigabytes, expecting a 27% reduction, even though we had Intel launched their new setup this year with Z690. We're expecting them to come out with another generation in Z790 before the end of the year. And AMD is gonna be launching their AM5 socket. So a lot of redoing of motherboards happening this year. But according to the reports, the slowdown in mining with people buying motherboards with their GPUs is kind of where they accounted for all of these sales. So even though we're getting three CPU generations in a given year, that's not gonna be enough to help bolster the sales of these motherboard manufacturers. Gosh dang mining ruining everything and FSR 2.0 is here to fix everything because it's now got plugins for Unreal Engine 4 and 5 which I can't count but then also uh it's gonna make games have it a little bit better which i know when we talked about the rx 7000 series i was talking about the intangibles that nvidia tends to have some people like to bring up fsr as if that matters because nvidia cards support fsr so did intel so like it's not that's it's a GPU agnostic setup. FSR 2.0 is good no matter who you are. And no matter who you are, if you bought a Steam Deck, you might be able to get it soon. Valve coming out with new reports saying that they're uh, wrapping up with all of their Q2 emails this week, obviously, because uh, Q2 ends in a couple days. But then on top of that, they're gonna be doubling the number of Steam Decks that they're shipping out every week. So we should be getting more Steam Decks in case you pre-ordered yours and want it to come out. Yeah, hopefully you can get it by October. That, that's if you've already reserved it. I, day one reservation, uh, still am expecting a Q3 delivery. Hopefully I get my email sometime soon. I had to be a pleb and go and buy mine out in the dirty third party pirate black market and it was not pleasant. So I'm waiting on my 512 gig. I cannot believe that it has been almost a year. July 16th was when reservations opened for the Steam Deck. Wow. Time flies. It's still a good console. Like a year later, I don't like there's nothing better. I mean, there's technically things that are better, but the competition's really slow on it. And then it also has Valve support for SteamOS, but then SteamOS can be installed on other handhelds. I'm just excited for it regardless. Okay, you can't you can't really beat the price. That's that's the most important thing. And you can't beat me to ending this episode of Hot News because I'm done. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you back here for more tech news on the hippity flap. I need help.